That is the quality of our services, services that have made us the envy of London. Thanks, Councillor Byrne. That was heartfelt and very well delivered maiden speech. Councillor O'Brien. Thank you. Um, can I just... You've got 10 minutes, Councillor. Ah, yes, thank you. I, I don't intend to use um, anywhere near that, but thank you for the indulgence. Um, thank you also, uh, and picking up Councillor Hogg's comment earlier, I think this is exactly the kind of debate we should be having in this Council Chamber. So thank you for the um, motion, and I hope I'll go on to address why our amendment motion is not... Um, a woolly alternative, but actually the, the necessary alternative. I, I want to start and echoing um, Councillor Graham's words by making very clear that it is very much part of our conservative values that we think work should pay. We agree that if somebody does a, a hard day's work, they should get some fair pay for it. We agree that if somebody goes to work on behalf of their family, that they should be afforded a, a reasonable uh, living standard. Uh, and that's why we, as a council, back the London living wage. We do. We back it and we've shown we back it. So that, that is not in question. The, the issue here and the debate is really around the extension of this motion which goes towards mandating the London living wage for, um, for third parties, for contractors. And I, I know you can get into the nuance of whether it's a mandate or whether um, how it's provided for in, in the contract. But ultimately it's, it's making a requirement to a third party who may not otherwise have made that decision. And I think that's, that's where the problems arise, and I think that's for, for, for a few reasons. I think, firstly, um, we have to look at, actually, what the, the policy is here. I think we can continue to talk about how, how, how positive and useful a, uh, an increase in pay is, and of course it is, and we'd, we'd accept that. But the living wage, we, we also have to accept, is not a long-term solution to wage stagnation. We're living in a very unique and interesting time where we have... Um, some of the lowest unemployment that this country has ever seen, and yet not the expected wage growth that you would look to see. And, and actually, there's huge disagreement on all sides as to why that's happening. And there's lots of reasons we can posit around this, the structure of the labor market and the like, but that is not what one expects. And therefore, the, the living wage is a good way and a good um, test case to try and boost productivity in the short term, and that's indeed why George Osborne introduced um, the scheme under a, under a, under a conservative government in the, in, the last, um, in the last five years. But ultimately, you are not going to see uh, sustained wage growth through an imposed living wage. You need to see a growing economy and you need to see improved productivity. So the focus, more broadly, must be on improved productivity. And then we come on, I suppose, to the problem for us in terms of as, a, as, a, as a customer and as a, as a, a tenderer of services. We are a local authority, and so we do, unlike many um, provide, uh, um, contract purchasers, we do perhaps have a social justice objective in, in, in some of the things we do. But unlike a lot of the companies that you have pointed to in, in the recent paper and in the case study, we don't make a profit. Um, all of our money is, is spent on services for the benefit of our residents. Most of it is, many, much of it is statutory. Um, but the rest, and as we've said many times in this chamber before, is about making sure that every pound we spend maximizes the benefit of our residents. And I think that's where we have a problem with the proposal. Can we be sure that the pound we spend on taking the cost, and there will be intending costs on many of these contrast, uh, contracts, is the best use of that pound? It goes back again to what I was saying a second ago. The living wage is an imperfect solution economically. It's a very blunt instrument. You can't see who is benefiting from it. The, the, research, show, the research shows that, that many of those who are on uh, a minimum wage are actually not in the poorest households. They're, they're, they're in high-income households. That's why there is a 25-year-old threshold for the, for the national living wage. I'll, I'll take you at the end if you will, because otherwise I'll forget what to say and it will become dreadful. But I, I, I see you. Um, so it, it is... A, it is Sure, uh, sure. It, so it is a very blunt instrument and it is a concern. And I think where we come from, and this goes exactly to the social mobility point, is that if we are spending a pound somewhere very uncertain that may not actually have that benefit, it may mean that we're not spending money on either the capacity to deliver our, our great regeneration that we're doing or on um, 
there's a question in here which you'll have seen the benefit of on, for example, our jump start and our future first schemes. Again, these are things around skills, training, the very things that provide social mobility, the very things that provide um, pr uh, pay progression. Because what the, what the London Living Wage will do is it will raise the floor, and, that, and that's why it's good, and that's why I encourage it, and why we've got an amendment to encourage it for other businesses. But ultimately, what the research is showing is that in three or four years, we're going to have a much larger pool of people who are still in a pretty tough job. It's just a little less miserable. And what we want to see, what we want to see is true wage growth. We want to see people who have an opportunity to take that further. They're not always stuck on the minimum wage. They have an opportunity through their skills and the opportunities that have been generated locally to move on, to do more. And that's why the focus needs to be on how we spend our money on the full picture and on improving productivity. So that's why we've got a problem with mandating this, because it's actually a social mobility focus that we have here. The London living wage alone won't deliver social mobility. It has a, has a role to play, and that's why we support it. But we must encourage businesses to follow us. We shouldn't mandate them. And that's why I've proposed the amendment. And I, I beg you all to support me in doing that. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor <Grimm. laughs> Thank you. Just, I, I mean, I... Just one very simple question I'm following. If the, no, the living wage is so uncertain, then why is Wandsworth signed up to it for its own staff? And why does one, and indeed, why does Wandsworth make such a great play of the fact uh, as a great thing that it's done yeah, to do that? It's a good question. There does seem to be an inconsistency. No, thank, no th thank you. I'll answer that within my, my time, if I, I may. It's a good question. I'm not saying that it doesn't deliver. I'm saying as a policy solution, and that is effectively what we would be by doing by taking your, um, uh, your motion to fa effectively mandate it. It will not solve it for the economy. It is a good thing for a single employer, if they, to, to, if they can see the benefits within their organization, which they, many will and they should, to improve productivity, uh, to improve staff retention, and you know, to helping those who are finding it difficult. It is a good thing. But as a policy solution across, because otherwise you could just mandate, you know, we'll, we'll pass legislation to mandate that, you know, a living wage at, you know, 50 grand. It just, it, you will have unintended consequences in, in the economy. So that's, that's why you can't do it. I, and I think to, to, go to, to go to your point on trumpeting it, I think that's partly the problem with this. It's a great campaign, but, you know, there was a, a huge upswell of response earlier by, I think it was Councillor Rigby, about accreditation is all that counts. Well, why is it accreditation that all that counts? Because, you know, ultimately the accreditation here is from a campaign group, and they've been very successful. But there's no reason to say that that is, you know, that, that some independent campaign group setting a particular number is actually is, go is going to deliver the best benefit for the economy. Nothing at all. The most important thing here is that we are delivering a fair pay for our workers. We're encouraging it in the contracting partners we do, but we're focusing every pound we spend on improving productivity and improving training and job opportunities. And that's what this council wants to do, and that's what we'll continue to do. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Gibbons. Thank you. Um, I think it's been really good to have this discussion um, about the living wage for all staff serving the council and our residents, which is what I hope the paper that I put forward would achieve. Um, now, I recognise that we've had some disagreements over particular elements of how we might reach uh, paying the living wage. But frankly, I think we have to consider we should do this by whatever means necessary. Um, there are all sorts of uh, points that we could clear up in terms of implementation, and uh, the, 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 uh, those are easily available. If you look online, there's plenty of information about how to do this. There's plenty of people to consult. Um, if we talk to other boroughs where they've tried to implement it and come across problems, I'm sure our officers who are incredibly able will be able to find ways around those obstacles and obstructions. So I, I think if there, is a, if there is a strong will to implement the living wage, then I think we can all do it, and particularly if we work together. I'm quite happy to work together with members from the opposite party here on how we might implement this. Um, I think the important thing to realize, though, is that poverty is avoidab avoidable. Um, low wages, uh, problems with benefits and so on are... One of the reasons why people, for example, turn up to food banks. Um, if we make sure that people are paid a proper wage, 
we will avoid the need for using food banks. And I'm particularly struck, incidentally, over the weekend, a number of Conservative MPs did co go along to food banks wearing Christmas jumpers, as if the, uh, the, the, those food banks had absolutely nothing to do with them. We can do things about poverty. It's not a natural disaster. It's something that we have control over. And I think, you know, there's been a lot of talk about confusion and contradiction in things. There is a contradiction between the, the answer we have in question two on our council questions about the council has always taken the view that we should not intervene in the external market by instructing contractors what wage they should pay their staff beyond what they're legally required to do. That seems to me a very rigid ideological interpretation of how you might conduct things. And the fact is that um, although this, this uh, amendment is extremely weak, it is actually a bit of progress from that ideological position. It's actually a step in the right direction. Fact is that when we put this motion up, we completely cheated. We, we copied it word for word from Kensington and Chelsea, a conservative borough, where it was proposed by two conservative councillors and unanimously accepted. Um, so the only word we added or changed was Wandsworth for Kensington and Chelsea. And in fact, their proposal was actually stronger than some of the things I came up with in my paper. Um, so I, I'm very disappointed that uh, we haven't actually, or, or it looks as though we may not uh, fully uh, back what uh, our colleagues across the river have proposed. I think this is progress. It's not really what we wanted for Christmas for our residents, but there is a good will to actually make some positive progress, but it's not far enough. We need to move towards adopting the living wage, the London living wage for our workers in Wandsworth. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to finish off by a bit of wisdom from the Beach Boys in their... Uh, uh, Christmas classic, Little St. Nick, uh, where they point out that Christmas comes this time each year. Um, very sage advice. Um, but actually, Christmas comes earlier and earlier. Uh, it starts in November, which incidentally is the same time Living Wage Week starts. So uh, for next year, uh, we'll be having another debate on the living wage. We'll keep on pushing. We'll keep on fighting until we have the living wage flag flying above this town hall, this Councillor Rigby says. Could you give way on that one? The matter now before the count, this council is the Conservative Group Amendment on the Living Wage Motion Agenda Item 21. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the amendment. Those against the amendment. <coughs> the amendment is carried twenty nine votes to twenty five, which reminds me. Uh, of Councillor Gibbons' uh, reference to Christmas, um, after, this, um, after this meeting, after this meeting, I hope you'll come to the parlour for um, mince pies and possibly wine, or well, mulled wine anyway. Not very strong. <laughs> right. Okay, now we're now on to uh, questions to the uh, cabinet. Sorry, 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 sorry. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Right. The motion as amended is it the same number as the motion as amended? Okay, sorry, we're going to the motion as amended. Can we have the same numbers or do we need to vote? No. Is it, is it, it's okay. Is the motion as amended agreed? Is the motion as amended agreed? Agreed. It is. Okay, brilliant. Questions to the cabinet members will now be taken. Question number 12, Councillor Ambush. Question number 12 to the cabinet member, please. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ambush, for your question. And um, it, it's a good question because I know 
and we all agree that um, it is tough times for special needs in, in schools. But um, we have, we, our schools are actually um, managing particularly well compared with other schools in London. And in fact, we've got in the lowest quartile for London boroughs for overspend. So our schools are rise, rising to the challenge there. Um, the overspend, particularly because of the high needs budget, is going to be about 900,000 this year. But the short term um, tackling of this is very much down to the schools forum and that's the group of schools working together to find out the best way to, to deal with this overspend. And I really pay a credit to the schools because they have really stepped up to the plate on this. And particularly a small group which has been set up called the High Needs Bl um, Block Group, which is actually beyond the schools forum. It's other schools who've decided to come together to try and help each other and sort things out. And they've met six times already this year. And they put their, their suggestions to the schools forum back in October. Um, and the suggestion was that all, all um, providers, all schools, all PRUs, all special needs schools should provide half a percent of their budget towards helping out the schools, um, the high needs block. And this was agreed, and this was agreed by the schools themselves. The long-term strategy is, is obviously, will take obviously more time, but the long-term strategy is to make sure that those children with edu education, health and care plans are actually placed more in our schools in the borough. And um, that's, and in fact, we've got a question later on about um, bases and ASD bases, et cetera. So the more we have children not going out to expensive placements or independent schools outside the borough, the more that comes in, that come in. And the other area which we have to keep a very weather eye on is benchmarking ourselves against other, other boroughs where we're spending. And I can see, and I'm sure Councillor Ambash knows that too, that we're actually spending more on post-19 provision than many other boroughs. And that's something we've really got to work with the FE colleges to come to some sort of agreement on that. Um, just to, there is a, um, there's a table which shows exactly where the money will be coming from from each of the types of provider in, in within Wandsworth. And actually, when you take into account that schools if you combine all their carryovers, all their um, reserves, which they're sitting on 40 million pounds of reserves, what they're going to contribute to helping out the high needs block is absolutely minuscule, and that was a schools forum decision. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Amber. Can I thank the cabinet member for her answer? But I would like to say that she has failed to answer my question three about the effect on SEN children. And you have again trotted out this 40 million in reserves, which is mostly not in special schools. So many schools don't have any reserves at all. And I'm not convinced that the cut of one and a half million will have relatively little impact on special education needs. So as this is such a serious problem in London wide, why doesn't the cabinet member indicate support for the London Council's campaign across London to increase funding for special education needs to a realistic level rather than cut the service. Thank you, Councillor Attenbash. Um, I, I don't think you really understand the role of the Schools Forum. This particular decision was taken by the Schools Forum with input from the High Needs Block subgroup, and they were the ones who decided that the impact on their, their support for children in their schools would be minuscule, and they decided that this half a percent would go towards all all um, the high needs block and as for supporting special needs and, and um, lobbying for, for more budget for special needs you know that I'm doing that we've mentioned this several times and in fact I'm um, in the process of arranging meeting with with the minister um, Minister Sahawi to particularly talk about this so we are on the case and this is a schools forum decision for their own good second supplementary Mr. Mayor. Councillor Dawson uh, thank you Mr. Mayor um, as the Cabinet Member knows, uh, Councillor Crivelli and I had the opportunity of speaking with the Minister at the recent Conservative Party conference, so I, as particularly about SEN funding. So I wonder, um, as well as lobbying him, you might care to invite him to uh, Wandsworth to see the excellent work being done at our SEN facilities and resources, especially, Mr Mayor, as Honorary Alderman Sahawi did extend his best wishes to the borough. Cabinet member. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Dawson. I think that's an excellent idea. And um, as you rightly say, we have some wonderful 
facilities here for special needs children. I would be delighted to show him around. Right, the whips have agreed that we cut short um, questions. All right. Back to question 13. Councillor Dawson. No, question 13 to the Cabinet Member for Education. Thank you, Councillor Dawson. A question about um, the Roeha Roehampton regeneration. I sort of feel this probably is more for Councillor Caddy than me, but I, w I will deal with the, the sort of financial and re regeneration part of it. But actually, the... Um, before the Roehampton Club is going to be um, closed and um, um, not being used by the, the, the young people there, the base refurbishment is definitely going to be sorted out first. And also, we've got this rather interesting idea of having a mobile van, a mobile youth club, which is being procured at the moment. Um, so the, 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 the base um, will be ready in March 2019. And the, um, I've asked particularly to find out about this mobile provision, and that apparently is going to be up and running, ready for the summer when um, there are a lot more activities for young people in Roehampton. Supplementary question, Mr. Mayor. Um, in good. thanking the Cabinet member, um, as she will recall, it was particularly concerning of the education OSC about the timing for these interim measures. So, um, obviously, very much welcome uh, her, her comments and her time frame. Anything that can be done to expedite it, either by her or Councillor Caddy, much appreciated. Um, and I just wonder um, whether, in fact, in the more general phrase or uh, frame, framework, uh, this example and also all the developments in Winstanley and York Road are a real example of Wandsworth Conservatives delivering for all through major regeneration. Absolutely agree with that. I think both, both with the, um, the Roehampton and the uh, Winstanley York Road, there are some fantastic opportunities which we are grasping both hands to provide better services and, and facilities for young people, better facilities for children and, and families. And it's just what we should be doing, working with developers to make sure that they help us put back into our communities what our people really want. Second supplementary. Councillor McKinney. Um, one question about the um, base. Are you also having conversations with Regenerate, the other youth club down the road from the base, to make sure that they know what's happening? Yeah, we can certainly have um, conversation with Regenerate, and I will follow that up. Question 14, Councillor Denfield. Question 14 to the Cabinet member. I thank the councillor for his question. As can be seen from the written answer, that has already been agreed with uh, the contractor, and I hope that they'll also be providing uh, services in addition to stay and play as well. Supplementary question, Mr. Ca Mayor. Uh, councillor Graham's amendment to the original paper required six hours of stay and play to be provided per week, whilst councillor Senior's answer states that the stay and play will be provided for six hours per week during term time. Can the Cabinet Member please confirm that the provision will be as per Councillor Graham's amendment that was accepted by a vote in the committee? Uh, following further discussions with TFC, I am quite happy that there will be further discussions with them to see whether this can be extended uh, from term time to all year round as well. Question 15, the Cabinet Member for Education and Children's Services, Councillor Birchall. Yes, sir. Question 15 for the Cabinet Member. Thank you, Councillor Birchall. Um, yes, I, I, I'm delighted to, to, in fact, it's set out in, in the question and, uh, and the answer on the paper, but um, we are particularly forward thinking with our support for, for special needs and um, particularly in the fact that they are provided, um, supported, provided in mainstream schools. It's where it should be supported, if at all possible. Um, for example, Riversdale Primary School has a, um, has a base now for autistic and um, speech and language for key stage and key stage one and key stage two children. And in October at St. John Bosco's College, um, the Devereux base was opened to add to the Sav Savio base as well. And in fact, Councillor Crivelli and Councillor Dawson and I went to visit that um, last week and we were 
I'm very impressed with it, and obviously the school are rightly proud of the, the service they give to children with really quite severe special needs who are actually looked after in, in the college itself. So, and they, they are separate from the college, but they have that chance to go in and, and work with the other students as, as needs be. And then also um, nearer to where my board in, in Nightingale, just over into Bedford, in Ra the Ravenstone School has a base which is going particularly well and was opened in 2017. And that's got some very high quality provision. So um, just to, to bring it all together, we've got two preschool bases for children with ASD, six bases for primary school children with ASD and speech and language, three secondary bases for young people with ASD and speech and language, a primary base for children with moderate learning difficulties, and a primary and secondary resource base for hearing impairment. I think we are really leading the way in our support for special needs. Uh, question 16 oh. of the cabinet yes. member. Hello. Oh, we have a cut. Yeah, to Birchall. Um, thank you very much for your very full answer. I just wanted to say, do you feel that the best option for children with special educational needs is to be at a school near their home? Thank you, Councillor Birchall. Yes, and um, I, mean, I certainly agree. And if I had a child with special needs, I would want it to be as near home as possible, could cut the travel time so they're part of their local community. And also, that, uh, you know, there's masses of evidence and expert evidence to say that is the case. And of course, the byproduct of that is that we're not having to pay for them to go out of borough, which costs a lot of money with taxes, also costs a lot of money to go to these um, schools beyond the borough independent schools which means there's more money to be ploughed back into their support in the borough. Question 16 of the Cabinet Member for Education and Children's Services, Councillor Rigby. Yeah, um, question 16 to the Cabinet Member. Thank you, Councillor Rigby. Um, this actually, this is deja vu. I'm sure we've talked about this many times and nothing has changed. So in a way, <laughs> you're not going to learn anything new from this, but there was an equalities impact of needs assessment at the time. So it was very, very carefully sorted that there was no discrimination um, having the impact there. You talk about five particular children. I think, I feel I'm also going to casework. It's not really appropriate to talk about these particular five children. Um, but in general, Children of that very young age aren't automatically sent to special schools. That is not the right place for them. They have to be very, very carefully assessed to find out the best support possible and, and, and use the facilities we've got across the borough. And uh, as set out in the, in the answer, we've got some really expert um, places who can support early years children with special needs. And that adds to the lovely long list I said in the last question, which is also about support and special needs. So, for example, we've got Hillbrook Primary School and Eastwood Nursery School. We've got the fabulous three maintained nursery schools who really work very well with SEND children with early years, Balham, Eastwood, and Somerset. And then we've got particular specialist um, provision at Greenmead, Linden Lodge, and Paddock. Um, and I think the, the point with your question is that Every special needs child, you know, when they're really from a very early age, have to be assessed particularly carefully. They can't, it's not just presumed to sit, to sit, that they will all go to a certain school. Each one will have a school or a placement matched exactly to their, to their need. And um, in Wandsworth, inclusion is our absolute top priority. So um, including them as much as possible in schools and, and um, early years provisions is, is the best way. Su supplementary question. Okay, so I just want to correct you. You should know that placements are reassessed annually, so that saying it traps a child until they're 19 is irrelevant and wrong. The fathers of these children are in the gallery tonight, and they'd love nothing more for their children to be capable of entering a mainstream nursery, and they know their kids better than somebody who might know what it might be like if they had a child with special needs. These children need care now, and all the nurseries you've identified in your response have been shown as early as today to have been unsuitable, all except Greenmead. These children will be excluded and discriminated against by being forced into a mainstream nursery before they are ready. So the question is, what will you do 
What will you do to ins I'm asking the question. So your qu the question is that's come from the fathers of these children. What will you do to ensure that these children are able to access the care they desperately require and address the fallout of the closure of Sirewood Road, which is proving catastrophic for them? Thank you, Councillor Rigby. As we've, as we've debated and discussed many times before, Sirewood Road was very good at the time it, uh, it, uh, at the time it provided that, that uh, expert help. Things have, moved, things, have moved things have moved along across the whole of the special needs um, provision um, and e expertise in that. E provision is now far better in schools which are um, on early years basis, which are specially designed to help these children be included. I will personally work with officers, and I'm doing that at the moment, and I have been in touch about these particular five children. I will personally work with officers to make sure that the best place is found for those children to have the best start in life and to get on as much as they can in life. Councillor Angela Graham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As I listen to this discussion tonight, and this is not a speech, I am very sad that special education children are being used as a political football. I really think that really is below the belt. Below the belt. I've visited the families within my ward, and I've also visited Sywood Road, and I really do praise the officer's experience in Sywood Road. Councillor Graham, I, can we have the question, quest, please? My question, yeah, my, my question is that I really do believe there is a lot of support there, but my question is... Uh, can we have the question, please, Councillor Graham? We are a borough which has inclusion as a priority. Councillor Graham, what's the question? Cabinet, my, the, right, Act, Act 2, Scene 3. I'm going to ask the Cabinet member, would she agree that we are a borough which has inclusion as a priority. Thank, thank you, Councillor Graham. Yes, inclusion is a, is a top priority, and I will repeat what I've just said to Councillor Rigby. I will be personally working with officers to make sure that every one of these children she refers to is given a very, very good um, support and is found the best match for their child. And as for inclusion, I think I will refer back to um, a wonderful... Um, a wonderful um, um, debate we had some young children who are special needs themselves about how they would feel included and we have well, there's a poster you can see it around lots of schools now it's called the 10 top tips for inclusion and that is made up by children with special needs about how they can feel included in schools and that is being taken up by schools across the borough and it is our mantra inclusion is top priority Mr. Mayor Mr. Mayor Councillor uh, Mr. Mayor uh, understanding Order 25, I'd like to move a motion to move to the next order of business. Seconded. Is that agreed by the council? Agreed by the council. We now turn to report number one, items for decision. I move reception of that report and will ask the council whether they approve the recommendations in each paragraph. Paragraph one, local plan partial review employment and industrial land. Is the recommendation approved? Yes. Paragraph two, mid-year review of treasury management in 2018-19. Is the recommendation approved? Yes. Paragraph three, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. Is the recommendation Mr. approved? Mr. Matt, Mr. Matt. May I request a recorded vote, please, Mr. Matt? Is this a division? Okay, it's a division.
It would help just to say what it is. No. Mr. Mayor. Are any councillors allowed back in the full council chamber? If there is a division and the bell has stopped. Councillors, so this is a recorded vote. Um, uh, I'll just read out the recommendation to council, uh, the, the recommendations that the council adopts the full IHRA formal definition of anti-Semitism into its relevant policies authorizes the Head of Human Resources to make the necessary changes to the published staff code of conduct and authorizes the monitoring officer to make the necessary changes to the member code of conduct following consultation of those changes with members of the Standards Committee and the Council's independent persons. Uh, so I'll call your name out, councillors, if you could uh, just indicate... Mr. Mayor, may I speak? Um, is, is there any... No. 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 no uh, it's you can't it's speak. A, it's you can't speak. It's you can't speak. So, so councillor, councillor Akinola. Four, four against or abstain? It's four. Councillor Ambash? Four. Councillor Anderson? Four. Councillor Belton? Four. Councillor Binder? Four. Councillor Birchall? Four. Councillor Byrne? Four. Councillor Caddy? Four. Councillor Calland? Councillor Carpenter? Four. Councillor Cook? Four. Councillor Mrs. Jane Cooper? Four. Councillor Mrs. Leone Cooper? Four. Councillor Ms. Critchard? Four. Councillor Crivelli? 